Hi folks, how are we all doing? I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. I hope you're, you're all finding the love and witnessing the blessings that are there in life in these difficult times. I know it's hard, my friends, but we're all in this one together. We're all in this one together. These devotions are my little bit of hope, if you like, doing what I can, playing my role, being a part of the solution. They are offered as a balm for the heart, for the mind, the spirit and the soul. And the title for today's devotion is Sanctuary. Sanctuary. So I invite us just to still ourselves together now in silence. Let's invite a loving presence to be here amongst us and to awaken from deep, deep within us. I have lit the flame of freedom in the cup of belonging, acceptance and love. Rumi famously wrote, Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you've broken your vows, a thousand times. Come yet again. Come. Come. And I like to say, know that you are welcome. Know that you are welcome as you are, exactly as you are in this moment. Come as you are in this moment. You are welcome here as you are, warts and all, and beauty spots too. You are welcome no matter the state of your heart, your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul. Even if you are too weary, come, come, come. You are welcome as you are, exactly as you are in this moment. Come as you are, as you are, exactly as you are. But I also like to add, but do not expect to leave in exactly the same condition. I'm going to share with you some words by Kathleen McTeague from her wonderful book of meditation, Shine and Shadow. This is titled, This Place is Sanctuary. You who are broken hearted who woke today with the winds of despair whistling through your mind, come in. You who are brave but wounded, limping through life and hurting with every step, come in. You who are fearful, who live with shadows hovering over your shoulders, come in. This place is sanctuary and it is for you. You who are filled with happiness, whose abundance overflows, come in. Who walk through the world with lightness and grace, who awoke this morning with strength and hope. You, have, you who have everything to give, come in. This place is your calling, a river bank to channel the sweet waters of your life. The place where you are called by the world's need. Here we offer in love. Here we receive in gratitude. Here we make a circle from the great, great gifts of breath, attention and purpose. Come in, come in, come in. Come as you are, exactly as you are. Come in, all are welcome. Come in, come in. Don't be shy. There is a verse in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2, actually. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. 
But do we show hospitality to these strangers that are in our very midst? Do we believe they're angels who are amongst us? They are, you know. They don't have wings, but they're amongst us. Now, showing hospitality and caring for the vulnerable in society is a key aspect of the Judeo-Christian and Islamic traditions. You will find it deeply rooted in these Abrahamic faiths and actually in virtually every, any other of the world's religions. Hospitality is an essential spiritual practice. It begins with an open heart and a generosity of spirit. It's about recognising the good in life and in people, especially those who find themselves in dire circumstances. It's about recognising ourselves in those very same people, seeing them as us. Empathy. It's about being open and welcoming to all, wherever they have been, wherever they are going, wherever they find themselves right now in life. Tibetan Buddhist monks greet the strangers visiting their temples with Welcome friend, from what noble spiritual tradition do you come? The Christian monastic tradition is a long-held practice of taking in strangers and offering them sanctuary as if they were Christ, inspired by those very words we heard from the Hebrews. In so doing, they are following the example of Jesus, of course, who mingled with all people. There was no one left outside the city gate for him. No untouchables in, in his eyes. But if people of faith live like that, who is unacceptable to us? Increasingly, our age is becoming characterised by distrust. There is a fear of the strange and the stranger. The idea of assisting or taking in a stranger is not something most of us would want to do. And the idea that we might be entertaining an angel just seems crazy. But is it though? Who knows what gifts can emerge in such encounters? Maybe when we welcome the stranger, we give them sanctuary in whatever ways we can. What we are actually doing is liberating ourselves from the bondages of selfishness and self-centeredness. You see, when we put barriers and blockades up to keep the unpleasantness of life out, all we're actually doing is cutting ourselves off from the beauty that is present at the heart of all life. Living with hospitality and with openness is another way, a better way. Now, it won't change the world, but it will change our every encounter and bring the healing of sanctuary to all involved. In the words of Joan Chittister, Hospitality is the way we come out of ourselves. It is the first step towards dismantling the barriers of the world. Hospitality is the way we turn a prejudiced world around one heart at a time. When we open our doors to those in need, we open our hearts to a loving encounter. And in so doing, we do indeed greet angels. The angels in ourselves and the angels in the stranger, in that space, in that encounter. That's where the power lies. That's where love is. That's where love comes to life. We've talked about sanctuary and opening our doors and offering welcome and hospitality brings this ancient word to mind. What on earth does it mean? I think I first heard the term when, it, when I was a child one Sunday afternoon in wa watching Charles Lawton playing the hunchback of Notre Dame and those immortal words, sanctuary, sanctuary and Esmeralda. You gave me water. And I think the second time I heard the word sanctuary was probably in the song by the cult, She Sells Sanctuary. Don't worry, I won't sing it. But I don't think I understood what it meant. What does it mean? I've been thinking about it a bit, quite a lot, really. I've been thinking about this phrase, sanctuary, who will offer shelter? And I've also, as I've been thinking about this, I've been thinking of all those beautiful souls that have opened themselves to me in so many ways and given me sanctuary in so many ways, whether materially, emotionally, mentally and spiritually throughout my life. Those that have given from their hearts, 
without expectance of return all my life. Now in its original meaning, sanctuary was a sacred place such as a shrine, a holy shrine. That was called a sanctuary. And these places became safe havens for people in desperate need and fleeing persecution in the medieval ages. The word has developed and expanded in meaning like words do over the centuries into a place of safety for humans and animals. There are animal sanctuaries, think about it. It's a place where we can be welcomed and made to feel at home and therefore we can thrive. You need to feel welcome and at home though in order to thrive. You need to feel safe and secure. Now I like to think of my own free religious tradition as a kind of sanctuary. A place where people can come and feel secure and safe as they are and then begin to thrive and grow spiritually with us. In so doing they can, be, they can become sanctuaries and places of welcome and hospitality in the world as individual people. They can live with openness and give to those they meet in a loving way. For me, being a Unitarian minister is about creating sanctuaries wherever I go and encouraging others to do likewise. Encouraging them to live openly and lovingly in a world that seems increasingly closed in and distrusting. It is about encouraging people to do what they can, whatever that might be actually. And by living this way, they may just they may just encounter angels, you know. And they may just become the angels that others encounter too. Because somewhere in that space is holiness. Holiness come that sacred space that we where love comes alive. Surely that's sanctuary. So where can we offer hospitality and welcome in this world? Maybe that's something for you to think about. How can we as people become a sanctuary? Where is the place of need in the world around us right now? How do we begin to heal our world and offer hope and a home to helpless and the hopeless? How do we welcome the stranger and encounter the angels of life, become them even? Well, it begins by looking at the need in our own communities and of course the wider world. But it also must begin in our own hearts and minds. And it begins by us living openly and lovingly with hearts filled with courage. It begins with building a sanctuary in our own hearts and opening our doors to one another and greeting the stranger and welcoming them in. Welcoming them in. Being a sanctuary. 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 So I'm going to end today's reflection with a few words of blessing. You know, we need to bless more and we can all bless. We do so by giving our whole hearts to life. So let's begin right now. Let's give our whole hearts to life. So I offer these final words of blessing today. Let us return to our lives in peace. May we deeply regard each other and truly listen to one another. May we speak what we each must speak and be ready in any moment to disarm our own heart and always live as if the realm of love had already begun. May we become sanctuaries through our very ordinary human being. Let's create sacred encounters. And may the love of God go with us in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do. Amen.